So this is a set that was recorded in Charlestown, West Virginia, and it's not my best set. It's actually a a bomb. It's probably one of, not even my worst bomb, but it's a bomb nonetheless. And around six minutes and 41 seconds in, one of the patrons here at the bar, a girl that just was belligerently drunk, thought she was part of the show because she's like the town drunk, I guess, in good old Charlestown, West Virginia. So motherfucker thought she was hot shit and, you know, wouldn't shut the fuck up, had her back to the stage during the show and... You know, I made a lot of mistakes in this set, and one of the mistakes was I got off stage, and, you know, I guess technically I threw the first punch, but you live, you learn. And I was thinking today, as I was editing this video, to put out, you know, as a comic, you have a lot of these rooms where you have to learn about different things, and this is one of my biggest learning experiences as a comic, This is not my prettiest set. In fact, I don't even think people would want to even listen to the whole thing because it sucks so much. But I will say this. I did learn, and you'll hear if you listen around minute 641, that, you know, I still kept going. And what I learned as a comic is there are three things that I hate the most. I hate being told no. I hate being told you can't do it. And I hate people turning their back on me. Those are my biggest motivations. So when this glass of whatever was thrown at my face, hit me in the chest, then bounced, hit me in the crotch, and or well, I guess the water or whatever she was drinking hit me in the crotch. My whole, you know, whole front body was drenched. It also the glass broke a glass on a stool behind me as well. So. I was so angry in the moment that I was like, I don't care what's going to happen. It wasn't the first time I've been attacked on stage. Probably won't be the last. But what it did teach me was there's no place on earth I'd rather be than doing stand-up comedy. So I hope you enjoy this little TBT and lots of love. Bangladeshi man. He had what I like to call clit dick. I don't think anybody in here knows what that is, but I'll walk you through it. It's basically a fucking waste of your goddamn time. That's what it is. Clit dick is like a bump of a beast of you know, a cock, just a little pocket rock head, like a little, just like kind of sticking out there. He pulled down his pants the first time and I was like, we've got some work to do. W-E-R-K work. <laughs> if you're still like confused, let me tell you, it was like China Doll the Wrestler, God rest her soul's dick. China Doll had like a, a porn and she took a little much too much, a little bit, a little too much vitamin T. Here we go. And she had a little too much tea, if you know what I'm saying, you know? But he taught me one thing, he taught me that making love is the new fucking, you know, kind of like orange is the new black. Like making love is when they make you your morning, like, coffee, and you're like, all right, thank you for putting the coconut creamer in, and you have that obligatory morning shower blow job, you know? When you're on your knees, just water is coming down your face, you've got snot running all the way down your tits, just all the way around the areola, just all the way around. And their stomach's just hitting you in the cheek. <laughs> you don't want an iPhone anywhere near the bedroom. You are cellulite out. You're just jiggle, 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 jiggle. That, that's making love right there, you know? Kind of looks like two slugs crawling over each other in a garden. If you're not doing it that way, you're not doing it right. You are not. Nope. 
hits have that suction cup sound where their stomach hits your stomach just that's making love. And actually in Maryland right now I was I was out west, but I'm in Maryland right now because my dad is sick. He had heart surgery, he was at Johns Hopkins, mainly it's because he liked cheese. Like too much cheese. And my dad, he shows me love in a weird way. He shows me love by sending me job applications on Gmail. He's like, oh, you want to be a comedian? Why don't you just be an accountant instead? And I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do. He's like, but you can make money as an accountant. So he sent me a weird job application the other day. He sent me, I was living in Los Angeles. He sent me a job for Border Patrol agent. That's what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to be a Border Patrol agent. I was like, dad, how does this have anything to do with what I do in my life? What's going on over here, Platt Sweater? I don't understand what's up. I don't understand what's going on here. Do we know? Do we like them? Are they our friends? Yeah, they're your friends. That's your girlfriend. Does she give good head? Yeah? I just found out you give good head. I do. You do too? Can you give head to all the people here? No. Thank you. 
across the corner, have her go dull Officer Smith's nuts in the morning, get her dental care just like them. You know, do I have like a splash of vodka all over me? I have it in my bra. Retribution. Why not? I mean, Catholic priests are great at it. Why don't we change it? Why don't we get rape victims like involved in the process and like a more get the people, buy the people, get old wrestlers and fucking UFC fighters, getting them to the octagon, you know, have a for the people, buy the people hashtag Twitter campaign and get rapists in the octagon. No lube involved. Have them ass out. Just twerk, 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 twerk. Like Brock Turner, he rapes a girl at Stanford, you know? Get him in a guillotine. Get an old guy, like, I don't know, he retired three years ago from UFC. And then have rape victims involved. And have dildos, like purple glitter dildos, strap-ons. And I call this program Pegging for Peace. Vote for me. Thanks for the free shot. Have a good night. That is a professional, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Richard. Coming from the stage next. I'm just mad I messed